Alright, what's up guys? So this video, this episode today um, is going to be the last video from the advanced training that we just had uh, this past weekend here in Greenville, South Carolina. So what that advanced training was, we had about 23, 25 uh, of our top agents in our company. Uh, they actually paid their way to come out for some advanced training. We have training events throughout the year, but this one was kind of a, a next level, uh, 2.0, if you will. Uh, we had Tom Shea that you guys saw in the episode yesterday, uh, which was incredible, talking about emotional resolve. Um, I taught about a three hour workshop on core four. We did a lot of practicing through that, which you guys saw the day before. And then we had breakout sessions based on the individual elements of our actual business uh, and what they wanted to get out of it. We created breakout sessions with people that excel in those areas so they could really hone in on their skills while they're here, hopefully leave and this week be able to implement that stuff and become better uh, at their craft. So with that, this is the last video from that weekend. And for those of you that don't know my business partner, Joseph Caldwell, uh, one of the most visionary leaders that I've ever been around, uh, has been a huge mentor uh, of mine, was one of those instrumental people that took me from being in that bad place four and a half years ago uh, to where I am today, and I'm eternally grateful for that. Uh, but one thing about Joseph is he's an incredible storyteller, one of the best storytellers I've ever been around. And he uses stories almost daily to get incredible points across and uh, lessons that are ultimately learned. This is gonna be one of those stories and it's the story of Gideon. I think you will enjoy it, but I think you more importantly will get something out of this and then we'll go back to our regularly scheduled programming tomorrow. Enjoy this episode. The story of Gideon is my favorite because if you read it and you read it like a, and you, and you take the lessons out of it, it's really one of the more powerful lessons that I found in the entire Old Testament. Um, in those days, Israel, there was the 12 tribes of Judah, right? And this is when they supposedly turned their back on the Lord and, and they were getting wiped out every year. And what was happening was there was a, there was a, you know, back in those days, marauders or, um, groups of people would band together to protect each other, right? Well, this one got so big, it's the biggest that any of them ever got. It was, they say it was well over a million people. And usually you may have had five, 10,000 of these, you know, these bands that would get together. But this was the Midianites. And, and there was over a million people. Their Eastern army, which would sweep through Judea, would sweep through Israel every year, was over 135,000. What they would do when they would come in is they practiced scorched earth. Does anybody know what that is? Mm -hmm. They would take all the food and then burn the fields. They would get as much water as they needed out of the wells and then they would fill them in. <laughs> what does that do to a people? Kills them. <laughs> Completely kills them. They would take all of the childbearing women with them and force them into slavery and bearing children for them. They would take all of the children and the, and the youngsters and raise them as their own. They would kill every warrior they could as they came through. So demolish any army, right? About the only ones left were the ones that were hiding and sneaking and running. And Gideon was one of those. So Gideon's story opens up and Gideon is sneaking through caves, sneaking from here to there, trying to make it to a place where he had hidden some food for his family. It was his, it was his job to go get it. So, so when the story opens up there, he's sneaking around and, and, and it says that an angel of the Lord came to see him. All right, showed up. And, and when the angel of the Lord showed up, do you know what he said? He said, hail, which is a sign of great respect that you give to a, to a great leader. Hail, mighty man of valor. Gideon is running for his life. He's no warrior. He's sneaking around just to try to get some food that they had hidden because everything else had been destroyed. And, and literally an angel shows up and, and if you study angelic beings throughout the Bible, they literally cannot lie. 
They can, they're called messengers. They can only deliver the message that God gave them to deliver, and they have to deliver it exactly the way it was supposed to. If you study it, that's how it's supposed to be. So literally, God was saying, Hail, mighty man of valor. Isn't that crazy? He's sneaking around. He's no mighty man. He's not a warrior. And Gideon goes, what? He goes, you're crazy. He said, do you not know that out of the 12 tribes of Israel, Manasseh, mine, is the least. Out of all the families in my tribe, this is what he says, mine is the least. He's like the bottom of the bottom. Right? Sneaking around, and that's how he saw himself. So, the angel of the Lord, Gideon says, don't you know what's happening? The Midianites come through here every year. They destroy our people. You call me a mighty man of valor? He's mad. I can, I can feel it when I'm reading it. I read between the lines anyway. It's first Joseph's second opinion. And, uh, and I could just feel it. I could feel that if it was me. If I, couldn't, if I couldn't cut the mustard for my family and I was the least one in it, I could sneak around and try to provide food. And then everybody else in my family is doing, all the other men are doing better than me. All the other tribes are doing better than me. Man, that's a, that's a shitty place to be. That's a crazy place to see yourself, right? And then an angel showed up and said, Hail, mighty man of value. You know what? I would have heard that. It's sarcastic as hell. It would have sounded so sarcastic because I would have been seeing and hearing it through my crap-colored hearing aids and glasses, right? And, and so he complains. He goes, You're, where have you been? He said, what? I can just see him sitting there like, what, the, what are you doing here? Like, don't you see? We have prayed. We've asked for your help. Where have you been? And he's talking to that angel. I would have been pissed. Would you have been pissed? Seven years they've been demolished every year. Mm. Boom, the Midianites have come through. Seven straight years every year. And he says that. Where have you been for seven years? And he's going, why haven't you done something about that? We're supposedly your people. Does anybody know what the angel said to him? After he complained and whined and told the whole story. Does anybody know what he said to him? He goes, go in your power and save your people. Oh. Go is an action word, right? <laughs> Quit sneaking around and go do something about it. Oh, you want us to? You want, you want get what, heaven to come down and do something? We already put the power in you. Go in whose power? Your power. He didn't say go in the name of the Lord. He didn't. He said, go in your power and save your people. And then he was like, hey, that's all I was here to say. <laughs> he was gone. The story bothered me a little bit at first when I first read it, and it's become my favorite because we always are looking outside of us for somebody to do something for us or, or if it's God's will, if I'll do this and I'll pray about it and all this <laughs> other stuff. And I get it. And I, prayer's not bad. But man, this story set me free. Because that was me. I was always blaming out here, looking out here for the answer. When all I had to do was go, you know what? I'm going to go in my power and save my family. It is the ultimate in personal responsibility. And so, if you don't know the rest of the story, it's crazy how stuff works. Gideon goes, he wants to see if God's with him. He tests him some more times because he's doofus. And every time, like every time the test turns out like it's true, you're gonna you're gonna do great things. And he's like, no, nah, let's do it a different way. You know, and he would do another thing. Three different tests. That's where it says throw out the fleece, that's where the saying comes from. But to fast forward the story for lack of time, he recruits through all the tribes of Israel, he recruits thirty two thousand people. Thirty two thousand. What was the size of the Midianite army, the eastern portion of their army? 130. 135. 135,000 people. Those aren't good numbers. Those are not good odds. Would you want to lead 30,000 against 130,000? No way. 
Not a chance. That would suck. But Gideon was going to do that. He had raised the army. He was taking them there. And um, Angel Lord showed back up, and he was like, so this army you've raised. Uh, some of them are faint of heart. Tell them if they want to be with their families, just go home. Gideon was like, are you serious? He's like, oh, yeah. So he tells them, yeah, how many leave? How many leave? Yeah. 20,000. He is left there with 12,000 people. And he's like, so the odds weren't bad enough. <laughs> now there's 12,000 of us against 135,000. Hmm. <clears throat> and I think God loves working this way. Angel Lord shows back up and he's like, too many of you. Too many people. <laughs> he's like, you got too many. There's only 135,000 of them. You got too many with 10, 12,000. Yep. And Gideon's like, to the river. what? <laughs> what do you want me to do now? To go to the river. What do you want me to do now? He's like, I tell you what you do. Tell them, go down the river, get a drink. The ones that are careful and scoop the water up and drink out of it like that. Send them all home. The, this, is, this is how the story goes. He said the ones that are like dogs that get down and lap it up with their tongue. He said, only keep those. I heard it preached the opposite way growing up. It is not. I heard it preached the opposite way every time growing up. You go back and read the story. It is the ones that lapped it up like a dog that he was to keep. I don't know why. <laughs> I still can't figure it out. Joe, the other way makes so much sense. What's the... I don't know. Is it just because there are animalistic kinds? That's what I was thinking. Savages. Yeah, clearly. The, <laughs> the dogs. Savages. Savages. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Maybe the other ones were too careful. Situational awareness. <laughs> Who knows? The other ones seemed more aware. But they were the ones. I guess maybe they were. Maybe they were dainty. <laughs> I don't know. I can't figure it out. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Either way, it was cold to how many people stayed. Three hundred. Three hundred people. 300 people. Sounds a whole lot like the Battle of Thermopylae with the Spartans, doesn't it? Fast forward through the story. So they engage them at night, and the Midianite army destroys themselves. 135,000, they beat them. 300 against 135,000, and they win. So I was never even concerned with the end of the story. I just kept going back to the hail, mighty man of valor. And I started thinking, man, if he only sees me half as good, maybe I can do something great. Right? Like, I saw myself as way less than everybody around me. When I walked into a room, I promise you, when I walked into a room 10 years ago, I felt like I was the least in the room every time. I don't care who was in the room. I don't care if I was at a daycare. <laughs> I'm telling you, I felt like I was the least in the room. Always, I always saw myself that way. I really have never told anybody. But this story, I kept going back to it. And then, I, and then because, I, because I was always like, God, why, when am I ever going to catch a break? Man, when is this ever going to go my way? When am I ever going to be able to be in a job and not get fired? <laughs> when am I ever going to be able to not fail at a freaking business? When am I ever going to be able to, to catch a break? And literally, I would go back to that story and I would be like, hey, almighty man of valor. Mighty man of valor. He had zero. A mighty man of valor has a historical record of defeating all of his foes. You understand that? If you break it down, has a historical record of defeating everybody. What was Gideon's record? Mm -hmm. Sneaking. Chicken. He's chicken. He has zero, zero record. And then I, and I thought to myself, and I was like, man, that makes so much sense, actually, because God's not bound by time. God was talking to him as he truly is because God finished his end before he started his beginning. Isn't that crazy to think about? You're not the you that God knows. 
The you that finishes the race is the one that he knows. Because he walked through your end before you started your beginning. How baffling is that? A little bit. <laughs> and, so, and so I kept going back to that. And I'll go back to that. And I, and, I, and I would keep doing that. And the angel just sat there and listened to him whine. I'm like, I'm a whiner. I may not have said it out loud, but I whined in my head all the time to him. You know? I didn't whine to Nathan about it. I didn't whine to Jeff about it. But I was a freaking whiner. I was a blamer. And I kept going back to that one story and, and, and his answer to him. He, did, he didn't even address all of his concerns. He just went, go. Oh, yeah, in your power. And save. Wait, I thought they were God's people. No, nope, your people. <laughs> when they're acting like they're acting now, they're yours. <laughs> think you want to save them, do it yourself. And Gideon was like, hmm, okay, I'm going to do that. And so all of the stuff that we're doing here with the core four and the Tom Shea and the walking through the stuff with you. I mean, this, he was just walking you through how you learn to see yourself as a fuck up. Man, is that who you really are? Did anybody in this room see him that way? No. no. But how you see you, none of these people have the key to your future. Only you do. But we're all that same way in certain areas. As Tom was talking, I was like, I see, I see, I see that in me here. And I was putting the things together. And I've even heard all this stuff with Tom before. Right? So I ask you, as I read this right here, this task force creed, I ask that you think, you think about you and what you're going to do. The type of responsibility that you are going to take through this core four. And, and I'm going to read this creed and we're done. And the people that can hang around and ask questions are good. The people that got to go, they're already out there, so uh, you'll be walking out as soon as I finish this, okay? So I won't look back, let up, slow down, or back away. My past is forgotten. My present is focused. My future secure. I'm finished and done with low living, sidewalking, cheap excuses, and dwarfed goals. I no longer need preeminence, position, promotion, promises, or popularity. I don't have to be first. I don't have to be right. I don't have to be recognized. I don't have to be praised, regarded, or rewarded. I have died to a self-centered, ego-driven, limp-lift lifestyle. I live by faith, learn by submitting, labor by love, lead by example, and lift by prayer. My cause is developed, my decision definite, my desire determined, my discipline dedicated, and my devotion distinct. My face is set, my pace is fast, and my road narrow. My way is tough, but my companions are strong and my counselors are reliable. My purpose is pure, my mission clear, and my values unshakable. I cannot be bought. Compromise, compromise, detoured, lured away, turned back, deluded, delayed, or denied. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of the adversary, negotiate at the table of the enemy, ponder in the pool of pop popularity, or meander in the maze of mediocrity. I won't give up, shut up, let up until I've stayed up, stored up, prayed up, paid up, and stood up for the price and the cause of our vision. I'll fight when others faint, go when others won't, give till I drop, teach till I'll know, and work till the task is finished. And when I lay exhausted, on the playing field of life. This task force won't have any problem recognizing me as one of their own. Yep. That was my goal. And that can be accomplished through what we're talking about.